Hey everyone, I have some more thoughts on the topic of depression. I put up a few clips last week about biochemical depression versus circumstantial depression. And I also want to talk about something that I don't know if I've ever seen this written anywhere, even by experts on depression, which is the actual benefits of being depressed. You heard that right. There are actual benefits of experiencing depression. And I'm a guy who's had depression on and off his entire life, so I'm speaking from personal experience. This is just not some nonsense. So what do I mean by that? <clears throat> well, think about it like this. Anytime you've made a very positive change in your life, 100% of the time it came from a negative place. For example, let's say you're 100 pounds overweight and you can't stand the sight of yourself in the mirror and you finally get that to that fed up point where you say no more and you dedicate yourself to a nutrition plan, an exercise plan, an overall wellness plan and within a couple of years you lose all that weight, you feel great, you're an inspiration to others. That extremely positive change came from a negative place. You reached a point of being fed up, you couldn't stand the idea of being in the same place anymore and you were willing to do whatever it took to make the change. I went through a similar experience in 2002. I got laid off from the last job I've ever had. I was working for an internet company called Respond.com and this is the third internet company I got laid off from. I worked for ServiceMagic.com before that and I worked for another internet company that I don't even remember the name before that. But anyway, as long as I had, I wasn't happy at this job. I was making $65,000 a year, which, I, which for, for me at the time was a great income, and it was easy work, and I had benefits, the whole shebang that everyone always talks about, the benefits of working for other people. I had all of that. The problem is I also had zero passion for that job, and that passion eventually, or lack of passion there, eventually became disgust. I used to drive to work just stressed out that I even had to go to this place. Now, when I would talk about this dissatisfaction to friends, even though their intentions were good, they would give me a lot of bad advice, such as, oh, you should be grateful to have a job. There are people in other countries that are starving. They would love to have your problems. They would love to have this job. Okay, that's true. But so what? Me doing a job I hate is not going to make them feel any better. You think their lives are being improved by me continuing down a path that I'm not enjoying at all? Of course not. So their circumstances have nothing to do with my circumstances. And me not improving my circumstances is not going to improve their circumstances. So that's a really poor excuse to stay down a certain path. Also, nothing good comes from a place of guilt. Guilt, just like jealousy, are extremely wasted emotions. Nothing positive comes from feeling guilty. Nothing good comes from being jealous. Nothing whatsoever. You may think, oh yeah, they're motivators to go achieve this, but the intentions behind it are so erroneous that even if you achieve anything, you're still going to have that empty feeling. It's still going to be extremely anticlimactic. So that's bad advice. When someone has depression and you tell them, oh, just think about people that have cancer or think about kids in a burn unit, that doesn't make that person feel any better, especially if it's biochemical depression. Biochemical depression is independent of circumstances. It has nothing to do with your circumstances. It certainly has nothing to do with other people's circumstances. So that's extremely poor advice. Better advice for somewhat biochemical depression is to get blood work done and look at your hormone levels and your neurotransmitter levels. Look at other parameters of health. Maybe your sleep is poor, your diet's poor, etc. Those are measurable things that will make a huge impact on improving your mood. And I say that from personal experience. But what are the positives of negative think or depression? Let's go back to that. So again, very positive changes often come from a place of very negative circumstances or a negative mindset, a fed up point, if you will. So the I wouldn't have achieved anything that I'm happy about if I didn't deal with depression. Depression is what got me to never go back to working for someone else again when I got laid off for the third time. I was depressed at that job and I go, the idea of just doing this soulless existence, putting in day after day after day, is not going to work for me. Just because other people can do it, that has nothing to do with me. So I'm not going to feel guilty because other people would be happy to have these problems or that they're content 
doing what I don't want to do. And I'm not going to let someone make me feel guilty about it. So I reached that fed up point and I knew in my mind that I would never go back to that level of existence. I was finally going to do what I always wanted to do and I wasn't going to give up. Burn the bridges, there's no going back. And there were several moments where I was tested over the next four years when I got into my line of work. And there were a couple times where I almost made the wrong decision, but I didn't. I persevered. I came through. And then the rest is history. Ever since I got into this line of work, fitness industry that is, and I've done many, many facets of it from a kettlebell trainer to a writer to making books, videos, and now running a nutrition supplement company, I've enjoyed all of it. I wake up each day. I'm excited. I'm naturally enthusiastic. I'm ready to go. But I wouldn't have any of these positive things that I have right now. Personal life is great. Professional life is great. Health and fitness life is great. I wouldn't have any of it if it didn't come from that place of being depressed about who I used to be. When I got into physical training, started lifting weights, getting healthy, that also came from a place of I couldn't stand the sight of myself in the mirror anymore. I was weak. I had a gut. I, was, I, I, could, I, I would walk up a flight of stairs and be tired. And I was only a teenager, but I was partying. I was doing drugs. I was doing all these self-destructive behaviors. And I couldn't stand it anymore. So I decided to dedicate myself to getting fit and healthy. And within months, all of a sudden, I wasn't drinking anymore. Wasn't doing drugs anymore. Not because I had strong willpower. It's because I didn't want to do those things anymore. I loved the feeling of being strong and fit. And I got addicted to making progress. So I was very focused on, at that time, building muscle because I didn't have any, but also getting really strong. And 25 years later, I still focus. Actually, longer than that, 27 years later, I'm still focusing on these goals because it's made such a huge impact. Now, I never would have gotten into getting strong and fit if I wasn't depressed about my circumstances, how I looked, how I felt. I didn't need all this positive thinking nonsense. Positive thinking is completely overrated. Now, should you be positive? Sure. Being positive is, is important for enjoyment of life because if you're not positive about anything, you're not going to do anything. You need to have strong self-belief. That's obviously a positive thing. So you need to have positivity about what you're capable of doing. And the more achievements you make, the more positive you're going to be about your own abilities and what you're prepared to do and what you know you can achieve. So that those are the aspects of positive thinking that I think are important. But when something is negative, we don't have to reframe it as positive to feel better about it. It's okay to say circumstances suck. It's okay to say my mother died, it sucks that she's gone, I'm never going to see her again and I'm depressed about it. That's okay. I don't have to sit there and go, oh, she had a great life and oh, I'm, I'm just going to think about her and have fond memories. I don't need all that bullshit. That doesn't help. It's okay to be depressed. It's okay to be sad. Usually you can use these things to make yourself a better person as well. So we don't have to try to make everything negative positive. You get a flat tire on the side of the road. Oh, well, maybe this prevented something else from happening. Maybe I was going to get hit by a Mack truck if I didn't get this flat tire. Yeah, maybe you would have gotten to your destination a half hour sooner too. All right. Bottom line is who cares that you got a flat tire? Fix it. Move the fuck on. You don't have to make it something. You don't have to make something that's irritating and a setback positive. So I don't like this, this obsession with trying to reframe everything that's negative into a positive. There are thousands of kids all over the world that are kidnapped and end up in human trafficking situations. Sex slavery, the worst suffering you can imagine. Now what could possibly be good about that situation? Absolutely nothing. So we don't need to reframe that and try to make it some positive end. What we need to do is eradicate it and support organizations like Project Child Save where these Men put themselves on the line to rescue kids at gunpoint if necessary. That's what we need to do. Those are proactive steps. Just trying to make ourselves feel better about negative circumstances, that doesn't help those kids that are in that circumstance. So anytime someone tries to make you feel guilty, anytime someone makes you try to, try to make you feel jealous, don't fall into those traps. Those are wasted emotions. They're of no use to you. But depression, if flipped, can be a fuel like nothing else. To help you achieve whatever it is you want to achieve, whether it's an impressive physique, whether it's making a lot of money, whether it's being with a significant other that's a great fit for you, coming from a place of extreme dissatisfaction is absolutely essential for achieving anything meaningful. You're not going to make massive changes when things are okay, 
well, I don't hate my job. I'm not excited about it, but I don't hate it. You know, so maybe I'll quit in a couple months and I'll get into this fitness business. That sounds exciting. That pussy ass attitude is going to get you nowhere. You need to have an attitude of fuck this shit. I'm not doing this bullshit anymore. And I don't give a flying fuck what anyone says about it. I don't care if you believe in me or not. I know what I'm capable of and I'm going to make this shit happen. And the rest you can go fuck yourselves. That's the attitude you need to motherfucking have. If you don't have that attitude, then fuck off. Don't even try to do anything. You don't deserve to achieve anything of merit if you're not willing to put it all on the line. So use depression as a fuel. Your sex drive is gone. You feel like shit. Fine. Learn about hormone optimization. Why do you think I know so much about hormone optimization? You think I'm just sitting around bored and I go, wow, that seems like a fascinating subject. No, because I've had erectile dysfunction. I've had no sex drive. I've had massive depression. I've had suicidal thoughts. I've been through all of that shit. And that's why I learned so much about hormone optimization because once I tapped into this reservoir, I realized that this is what I'm looking for to change my biochemistry radically so that I feel better all the time instead of just being depressed and just, just accepting it. And none of that stuff would have come from a place of just being content or mildly dissatisfied. You had to be extremely dissatisfied. Learning about hormone optimization became an obsession for me, and this is complex stuff. Bless you, Reina. Hormone optimization is complex stuff. This is not something you learn over a weekend. You read a couple articles and you're an expert on it now? Of course not. There are doctors out there who have no clue about hormone optimization because they don't have the time to research all of this stuff. And just going to an anti-aging seminar once a year is not gonna cut it. So unless you're absolutely obsessed with learning about hormone optimization, you're not going to get into it. And some trainers think, okay, it's the big fad now. I need to learn about this hormone stuff because everybody's talking about it. That dipshit attitude's not going to help either. If you're not extremely passionate about learning every facet of it, don't bother. Hire someone else to help you with stuff. That should help you anyway. So anyway, my point is that all the major things in my life, whether it's starting a business that I love, came from a place of extreme dissatisfaction. I couldn't stand the idea of working for someone else and going down that path of not being passionate about what I, was, what I want to do for a living. Being strong and fit, that came from a place of being very weak and unfit. I wasn't naturally strong or genetically gifted. First time I ever tried to bench press 140 pounds, I got pinned. I had to flip the bar over so I wouldn't choke to death. All right. So I wasn't strong when I first started working out. I wasn't like Mike Tyson where the first time he ever bench pressed, he bench pressed 245 11 times and he was 15 years old. <clears throat> but that made me obsessed with getting stronger because I hated the idea of feeling weak. If it just came easy to me from the get-go, I wouldn't have gone as far as I did. Making good income, that, I, I've ne I never made, I make more doing what I do now than I ever did working for someone else. And that didn't come easy either. The first year, I barely made it. Second year, you're barely getting by. Third year, you're starting to do pretty well. And, then, and this was working seven days a week and really pushing myself out there. So the point is, is that anything that you achieve that's impressive is not going to come from nepotism where you just inherit it from your parents. Everybody likes to talk about how we shouldn't just give stuff to poor people, right? We can't, you can't just give them things. Think about how many wealthy people have inherited wealth. They never had to work for anything a day in their life. So what's the difference? That's okay. That's acceptable. It's okay to inherit millions of dollars from your parents and be a trust fund baby. But God forbid we give some money to some poor people to help them get medical care and help them find better work and better housing. So anyway, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Just something to think about. Okay, so but anyway, the whole point of this to summarize is Depression can be used as a positive fuel to achieve amazing things. And sometimes you have to reach rock bottom. You have to, be, you have to deal with circumstantial depression or biochemical depression or at least extreme dissatisfaction before you turn things around. Positive thinking can be a crutch because it can make you reframe things that you should change into things that are acceptable so you don't move forward. So yeah, I hate my job, but I should just be happy I have a job, so I'm just going to stay put. I don't like my spouse at all, but she's better than nothing, so I'm just going to stay put. See, these are positive reframing methods that, re that result in extreme